a bit of a misty, windy, cool type day today. Hasn't really rained, but just enough mist that everything is damp and wet. Not much of a bee working day either. Everybody's just somewhat chilling out on the front of the hives. I don't know if they're actually drying honey down today or not. Probably not because it's so humid. They're sure working at it anyway. And I am poking around to try to figure out if I should start or not. Hives are filling. They're over two-thirds full. And there's space left in these boxes. They're full wall to wall. They're fattening out the frames, so that's good. These frames are starting to see some cappings, so that's good. The cells, you know, there's space left in these boxes as they draw them out. So they got two thirds of the cells full, but as you know, they keep pulling out these cells as they fill them up, as they fatten out the frames. So we're starting to see some bulk. My testing, 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 testing wet all the time. I'm just going through and trying to get a random sample exactly what's in these colonies so to do that I'm digging down taking a sample from a frame from every box to get a good uniform something sample and what I find as you know you typically would bottom box is here a little more cured more honey and I get more of a sample from that than I do from the top frames which would be a little more representative of what I see in the extractor. That's looking a little bit better. So I'm going to take a sample like that from a bunch of my front end yards and see if we're close to see if we can start tomorrow. So that's coming in at 18.6. That is a go. We will start tomorrow. So it's important that I get this right. So once I start pulling honey, I'm going to have my, if I take, if I don't take the weekends off or if I don't let the crew take the weekends off, I can have my entire apiary flipped in 12 days. So that's all this honey within 12 days in my honey house and ready to extract. So I lock in my moisture. So I got to make sure that I don't jump the gun. So then I bring everything in high moisture. And if I could just waited, you know, another three, four days to allow them to dry it down or let the bees do the work, then not only are my honey boxes a little bit bulkier, but my honey's dry and I'm not pissing around with trying to market this higher moisture honey to my packer. So I want to try to meet my moisture objective. I want to try to bring as much honey in these boxes as I possibly can, right? I want to be able to manage my workload all at the same time. So I think this honey, hitting it at that 18.6 is right on the money. These boxes, they're getting heavier to lift. They're bulking up. If I can get a start tomorrow, I'll flip 500 tomorrow. And then, depending on how intense the flow keeps going, if it's really hot and heavy here this next week, then I'll push through the weekend with the crew and get everything flipped over. But if not, I'll drag my feet a little bit take the weekend off and then start again the next week and just power drive it through to get the rest of the apiary flipped over and then assess as we look into that second pull. That second pull it is you know pretty much just picking up the drags. This year 
the drags. This field will be done blooming by the time we get the second pull. But that one over there is probably 20% bloom right now. So I'm going to be picking up my second pull on that late canola, which is going to fill these boxes right up. So that's why I kind of have a bit of a push right now, because not only do I want to make use of my workers, I want to be able to maximize my yield. I'm going to strip all this honey off these hives, give them fresh equipment. They're going to fill it right back up for me again. And I could have the prospect of a really good year if things follow through as the way I anticipate. It's one thing about hives, they fill their colonies up and they start to, you know, pull back a little bit. When you pull these boxes of honey off, take all that honey away, give them fresh equipment, they almost go into overdrive because they're like, what just happened? We better get busy. And they just fill everything right back up again. So I want to be able to take advantage of that spirit. And with all these flowers, the further we get into August here, and if I can get into my second pull, with flowers, I'm not going to have to deal with as much robbing. Not like that curse I had last year where we were dealing with robbing and we were already dealing with robbing. It was the 25th of July last year I was dealing with robbing. So that gets me through second pull and right into September when we start preparing these colonies for winter and into winter. So I might be able to manage these hives very swiftly now, now that I've decided on the start and start extracting and just keep going till the end of August, lose my workers. By that time, hopefully, I'm going to have all my boxes set anyways, and maybe have to just drag one set in September, leave some work for Carrie and I, and probably my wife Sandy, to extract in September. But then we can go and shift directly into preparing our colonies for winter. Not have to deal with the dearth. These colonies will be coming fresh off this abundance of flowers as they step directly into preparing that winter nest. So this could be absolutely ideal as things follow through here. By jolting with just a little bit of protein on that second pull, things might just add up perfectly here. So we're just going to keep watching our mite levels and everything else like this. And hopefully we don't run into the situation where farmers have to start spraying for grasshoppers in mid bloom because that's going to really throw a wrench into all of the plans so fingers crossed on that but if things follow through as i just described things could shape out to be very very lucrative